Guru, hey boy, hey buche, everybody in Cyberland, your pay by allow, at least I hope so, or more do on the like, or beato, to all my brothers and sisters out there, as we go over the letra de año for Cuba. Like I told you before, it was important for me to focus on Miami first because it's relevant to the viewers and the subscribers. Because the viewers and subscribers, the majority, live in the United States of America. So we need to understand what is the United States of America going through and how do we best navigate the challenges of 2024 and what do we need to look forward to. And I did that. Now, this is for my spiritual houses that follow Cuba, right? Where one way, shape, or form, my perspective does not matter. I already made it clear. There are some houses still that want to follow the Letra de Año for Cuba, which has some type of sentiment to it because the original Lukumi, Letra de Año being pulled, originated in Cuba for our, uh, for our faith. And it was a Letra de Año that was pulled, and it has been pulled for many years. Right? The first letter of Año, we can date to the early 1900s, but it was in the 1980s when Miguel Febre Patron started his own group, you can call it a commission of some sort, in order to start to pull how we can navigate the issues of oppression, the issues of depression, the situations that are going on in Cuba. When we talk about how government oppresses, how the government's a dictatorship, it's a communist country. And if you begin to look at the history of Cuba, and anybody who's been to Cuba, you understand it's poor. It is very poor. It's very rich in the faith, but it's very poor when it comes to finances and economics. So this year, with Iroso Umbo, Obewali, and Iobe, it had a strong message for Cuba. It's a message that is relevant to the letter annual that we had in the United States to some capacity. But when you hear the messages, you'll begin to understand why it's important for Letra de Años to be narrowed down to the most uh, minute detail, but to the minute level of energy you're trying to draw from. Because Letra de Año, you're feeding the earth. Letra de Año, you're feeding divinities. Letra de Año, you want this, this land to speak behind the ancestors, the orishas, through the guidance of Ifa, the word of God. I right, so it's important for us to understand that. It's important for us to hear this message for those of you who follow Letra de Año Cuba. But again, because you follow Cuba, it doesn't make it right, wrong, or indifferent if you live in the United States. But I just try to give you a perspective so you can make your own judgment. Now, before I do that, I want to share a video because I think this video is very important as we talk about spiritual development, spiritual growth. And we understand that we live in a world that's multifaceted. And it's not just two-dimensional, not just three-dimensional. It could be four, five-dimensional if you allow it. But you got to understand it. And you got to understand that you can't forecast, right, everything based on what you can see. There's more to life than just understanding what's in front of us. That's what makes spirituality important. That's what makes your faith important. So you are not the end. So let's talk about the end, shall we? And let's listen to this video. All right. I'm at my desk. That's where he's at. At my desk. And the desk is a service. And I start putting pages down on the desk. And then I run out of room. I've exhausted the two dimensions of the surface of my desk. We have ways of accommodating this problem. And so we have page organizers that go upwards. So now when I don't have any more surface area, area I can enter a third dimension and put pages there. If you are an ant embedded in this two-dimensional world of the surface of my desk, and you fill up the desk with these sheets of paper, the ant will say, there is no more room. And I say, yes, there is. Watch me. And I take a piece of paper off the desk, put it in the page organizer, and according to the ant that's embedded in the two dimensions, that page disappeared. It disappeared into a dimension that ant does not have access to. I'm at my... So that is how we need to look at spirituality. We cannot be the ant. We can't look at things two-dimensional. We got to understand that there's things that just because they're not there in front of us doesn't mean that we don't have access to it. 
right? That page organizer that he speaks of is no different than the land, Orum. Right? When we talk about the ancestral plane, it's no different than Olorum. When we talk about where the Iremoles resided and came to this earth, it's no different than the unknowns that we are still trying to discover. And it is no different than your Awofaka and your Ikofa when you received your sign and your godparents broke it down to you. What was the message that was trying to be said? And that's something that we always have to resonate on. So Iroso Umbo, let's jump right into it. Iroso Umbo was a sign that came out for, for Cuba, right? And, and in this sign, it begins to talk to us about guiding, uh, esteemed as by spiritual growth. Right? When I look at all these three, we look at spiritual growth. We look at alignment. We look at destiny, the importance of good character. Right, But overcoming the challenges that we have in front of us is what makes this a hallmark moment with these three old dudes. Right, But when you begin to even dig into it deeper, you talk about the alignment of destiny. Right, But in order to receive and do all of this, what the letter de año that Cuba is talking about is talking about good character, right? Your character is what's going to make you truly, I guess, advance yourself this year. This letter de año is talking about how do we begin to elevate our status? How do we begin to push ourselves forward? How do we begin to take that character and take that perseverance, right? And begin to channel it in order to do great things. Right. Collectively, the signs indicate that that all practitioners, right, whether you got Wofaka, you got Ikofa, it doesn't matter. They're encouraged to focusing on living in harmony with their destiny, seeking spiritual illumination and making all the appropriate sacrifices to ensure the alignment with the spiritual paths. Now, when we look at the aspects of Eshu Elebara, Right, as the governing Orisha for the year, it emphasizes the importance of communication, right? But it's a reciprocal type um, perspective. The government of Cuba has to be able to begin to listen to the needs of the people. The needs of the people need to work in conjunction with the government, but it only works if there's a reciprocity, right? If there's a flip and it's a two way communication. So, Eshue Legbara is talking to us pretty clearly there. Because remember, Eshu Elegbara is also known as a trickster type qualities, right? He represents the dynamic aspects of life and the need for the for changing of circumstances. Cuba's in, in poverty. Cuba's hurting economically. Cuba's government is not very conducive to the people. It's more conducive to themselves. That's what, you know, communist countries are. Right? And I'm not trying to judge one way or another, but the letter de año is speaking on the aspects of how do we begin to align ourselves with our destiny, which has a lot to do with our physical place of being. How do we grow in a place that doesn't necessarily allow us to grow? And then when we begin to look at other aspects, right? when we talk about Yemaya is the accompanying Orisha, Yemaya brings what? but the nurturing, the protection, and the emotional depth for unity between friends, family, and in this case, letra de año, for a country, we're now talking about where we need to bring the unity between the government and the people, where we need to come together as a country, in this case, Cuba, right, in order for us to truly get to where we need to get to. Yemaya's influence can be seen as almost a provider, right, of stabilizing and caring and counterbalance to the dynamics that is going on in Cuba and to the people of Cuba. And sometimes challenging, right, the energies of Eshu El Ebara to a point where it's bringing a peaceful equilibrium between these two divinities that are ruling, right? But the spiritual forecast, nonetheless, right, is we need to pay attention to that personal growth. We need to begin to look at what does right look like. And when we start to see what right looks like, let's start to evaluate that. 
It also Umo tells that that the Bawalaos in this sign, this is one of those signs that begin to tell us that we have to begin to be a little bit more um, deliberate on how we perform our ceremonies, how we how we look for the sacrifice that people need to do. Iroso Umbo is what tells us that not all sacrifice is monetary. Sometimes the Bawalao is going to have to do something from the heart in order to ensure that there's success with the people. It's not all about the money, right? It's not all about the money. Not all money is good money. And Iroso Umbo begins to tell us that. You know, so Umbo tells us that we have to begin to look at things in that fourth dimension. The reason why I showed you that video. Why? Because it you also know, Umbo talks about the Abiku, the child that was destined to die in order to leave a legacy so that the elders can begin to see the errors of the ways. And they can begin to navigate the community. They can begin to navigate themselves. Not so that we can feel the pain of a child that's stillborn or anything like that. No. Iroso Umbo is telling us that this is an Ifa, the Abiku child, the child that came here that fulfilled his destiny, which is why we have to fulfill ours. A child that's able to be born into this world and die immediately in order to leave a message and fulfill its legacy and its destiny, we should be ashamed if we're not doing the same to fulfill ours. In this particular case, we talk a lot about the acts of the alligator. It also almost speaks of the story in the Pataki of the alligator, particularly on the when the alligator didn't have necessarily teeth. And the teeth at one point in the Pataki was created and was blessed to him, allowing him to now be a predator instead of prey because it began to fulfill its destiny. In addition, not only is Eshu a great divinity that matches well with Iroso Umbo, but Eshu reminds us that he is the key. Eshu is the key to open and closing the doors. In this sign, Eshu is getting tired of Cuba. Eshu is getting tired on the probably the government, if I had to take a guess. Eshu is tired of the hypocrisy and the money greed, right? And what we're doing with the, with the practitioners of this faith that are trying to follow the word of Olodumari through Ifa, and they're being taken advantage of. This is one of the only odds where we begin to manipulate the eco fa within that ceremony where we do additional things in order to bring the embracing aspect of Ochun to Ifa. Right? And for the Bawalaos out there, you understand what this means. It also Umbo says that, listen, at one point in time, we used to live a very healthy lifestyle. The harvest will come up. We will eat from the ground. We will get back to the ground. The Buddha Boya. And now the cycle of life continues. But now we find ourselves in an age where we begin to eat a lot of greasy food. We begin to destroy the body that we have. That's why Nidoso Umbo says, hey, don't eat greasy foods. You're going to clog our artery. You're going to do something. It's important for us to watch our health this year in Nidoso Umbo because it's already beginning to outline to us that we need to be very mindful of those things. But more importantly, when I talked about the graces of Ochun and how Bawalaos now have challenges in front of them in order to continuously give destiny, right? Give destiny to clients through ceremonies like Ikofana Wofaka, we find ourselves with Ochun. Ochun's brace, all right? Ochum saved Orumila from a fire in a pataki in Eroso Umbu. And as a gift, he extended her the right to have more in keenness than the others in Ikofa. This is where Ochum eats with Orumila. This is the reason why we say that the children of Ochum are extra blessed in the eyes of Orumila because Ochum has many aspects where in favor that were in favor of Orumila. That's why Ikofas look different in Iroso Umbo. In Iroso Umbo, we talk about where spiritualist, spiritualism and those who have that gift need to begin to grow. They need to begin to reinforce it. They need to begin to look on how they can begin to truly make this work for them. Because they have a gift that they are letting go. They have a gift that they're not allowing to grow. 
They have a gift that they're not sharing with their community. This is the old doom of spiritualism. This is an old doom of spiritualists. And not only that, my advice is for all of those spiritualists out there, take a deck of tarot cards and put it on your boy. Take that and put it right on top. Put a glass of water, light a candle, and begin to align yourself with the aspects of those tarot cards. Because in it also almost a sign of when the gypsies first started to use tarot cards to read the fortune of others. But more importantly, what it was trying to exercise there was that the egos behind them that was telling those gypsies what to say and how to say it came from the egos. The spiritualists have that gift. That's why it's important it also humble that if you have a gift of spiritualism, if you have a gift of being able to determine and look at things, not mechanically, but more of an aspect of what is my gut tell me because my egos are talking to me, that is where it also humble comes from. In it also humble, if I saying that the Baalaos in Cuba are being tested, the Baalaos in Cuba need to get their stuff together. And if you want to pertain this to any other country, right, I would say that you have to look at it from your land as well. Those Oumbo saying Baalaos need to start to step up their game. They need to learn it both. They need to learn how to save community. And they need to follow the good character that is Iwapale. In addition, we need to be careful on where we're using our money and how we're obtaining money and how we're saving money. We have to look at it because those Oumbo. It's important for us to invest the money on the things that we need, not the things that we want. It also umbo even challenges the priests and priestesses that work this odun, right? See what you can do to help the person in front of you. Don't look at the person in front of you as a payday. Don't look at the person in front of you as a meal ticket, right? Because the faith was not designed for all of us to begin to abuse the faith of others. It also almost speaking to all of us, not just the priests and priestesses. We have to begin to look how we unify, right, the community. Yemaya said it. I'm not saying it. This is merely a perspective on it also umbo, but then see how it matches very well. But then we go back to Cuba. And what does Cuba have going on in their life? What does Cuba got going on in their government? And you got to begin to look at those things. It also umbo talks a lot about the things that we say, right, matter. And if we're not careful on what we say and how we say it, that issue is going to begin to close our throats. The issue is going to begin to stop us from talking. That's why it also umbo on a spiritual aspect. Careful what you say. Everything you say needs to be confirmed. Everything that you do needs to be confirmed. And that right there is where the secret of everything lies. Think before you talk and don't say things that you don't truly have an understanding of. Now, on a physical sense, for all of us, we should be going to the doctors. If you're suffering from throat problems, you're suffering from things in the mouth, go to the doctor. Dental work, right? Making sure that you take care of yourself because this is the area that is being affected this year. Problems in the circulation, diabetes, the blood flow, that's a problem in it also umbo. If you suffer from any of these things, it's important for us to begin to get yourselves checked out. And it also humble, as you says, he challenges people as the trickster, rightfully so, in order to build the evolution so that we can grow as humans and we can begin to fulfill the destiny and the vision that God had for this earth, which is mirror this to be another Olorum. So as you says, he's going to put cheating in front of you, adultery in front of you. Those things are very much relevant in this sign. Don't fall into temptation is the message. Don't divulge secrets. We already said, be careful what you say. In this sign, personal secrets begin to come out in the air. People say the more secrets you keep, the more people will know. Why? Because if we're not living in a, a, a good character, if we're not living in that type of model, we're going to find ourselves in a tough position with Iroso Umbo. Iroso Umbo also tells us that the Egums, the Egums are the ones that are going to begin to turn their backs 
on the people who are not listening to the advice given in this letter. The egos themselves will begin to be obsessed and begin to get impatient and cause chaos. You know, so Umbo is a sign that's going to say that when people are not doing what they're supposed to do, they're going to find themselves in front of a babalao trying to do a parando in order to cleanse themselves of that obsessed ego. So, in addition, go to your spiritual elder with Iroso Umbo and ensure that we see what Eshu needs. Ensure that we see, and if, if this possible, if it's marked through Ifa, during a consultation that you feed Orumina and Ochun together. Go see if you receive Olokun for the stability and the prosperity this year. And more importantly, do rogacion. Right now, the head cleansings and the feedings and all that stuff has to be prescribed. Get your consultation so you can begin to see what does right look like in your life. And then as we begin to maneuver towards Obewali, we begin to understand that now the egg booms are giving us a way out. The ego said, if you don't use me, if you don't take care of me, if you don't evolve, then I become obsessed and I become ego and buruku. But, you know, Bewali says, listen, but I give you a way out. I give you the steha de ego. I give you a spiritual pot. Hey, I give you, if you're capable and you're able or you have it in your pathway and your destiny to go get scratched, go begin to align yourself properly in front of the ego. Allow yourself to grow. Because in this particular Odu, it's important for us to remember who we are. It's important for us to remember that our only friends is the Eguns, the Orishas, and Ifa. Family is important. Friends are important. And I'm not negating that. But I am going to share that we have to be a little bit more cautious on the people around us. Because in Obewali, this is an Odu of lack of appreciation. Right? And when we begin to look at the lack of appreciation, that means that either they're not appreciating the actions of others or others are not appreciating their actions. Remember, it's the reciprocal that I was talking about when I first started this, this breakdown. Right, we have to It's a two-way conversation going. If people are not around you or doing what they need to do, then guess what? At that very moment, you need to begin to make decisions that's going to enlighten you. That's going to bring you to, to, to fulfillment because that's important. This is an odd We already talked about the blood. I'm not going to talk about that any further, but if you have problems, go get checked out. Obewali begins to talk about, again, the aspects of the blood where people cough up blood, the lungs. Right? We talk about the breast side. So now you got Oido Soumbo from here, and now you got Obewali from here, and you begin to see where the body is going to be very important. The body needs to be strong in order for us to be spiritually well, right? So we have to feed this piece here now, which is our brain, our ori, our capacity. Obewali is a sign where the person becomes very judgmental. The person is constantly back and forth, right? And we got to be careful because they can suffer. The person can go crazy at times because the person criticizes too many aspects. They got too many things going on in their minds. It also is beginning to tell us that we have to begin to organize ourselves this year with this letter de año in order for us to not overwhelm ourselves and fall to anxiety and depression. This is your year to begin to align yourself. Begin to receive the things that you need to do with ego. For those of you who are olorishas, I don't typically mark this. And again, everything has to come behind a, a divination system, right? But if Ifa marks it or Delegum or Mire Delegum marks it, you got to receive Babalu Ayer. If you already have Babalu Ayer laid out in your path in 20, or in, uh, in your spiritual path based on your Ikofa and Awofaka, this is your year. This is your year. Well, Bewali, go receive Babalu Ayer in order to begin to find the health that you need and the righteousness that you need on who is Babalu Aye and what he can produce to complement your physical and your spiritual well-being. Because this is a, an old doom of contagious diseases. This is an old doom that tells us that if we're not careful, we're going to find ourselves back in tragedy. And then when we close this up with a yobe, yobe, we begin to look at where now it comes full circle, where Ifa begins to tell us, listen, I already warned you once, right? You're not following the very first and the most primordial sign 
right? The first of the 16, the leader of the 16, Ejiobe, where we have to begin to organize our lives. We understand that Ejiobe is the beginning of all things. We understand that Ejiobe is when the sun rises in the east. I challenge each and every one of you to look at the fact that you have 24 hours in a day. And when you wake up in the morning, are you giving praise? Right? Are you looking to the east and saying, thank you for this beautiful day? Are you making your bed? Do you have a routine? Or are you staying up late? Are you playing on your phone? And you're not following and doing the things that truly matter. Because how much of the time in 24 hours do you truly focus on doing everything that you're supposed to do? So I say this to say, the prophecy. Right? Tragedies in the world that can generate to miss the blessings or health disorders, right? There you go. And now you understand why I'm speaking to this old one, these perspectives. So hopefully I gave this breakdown more for the viewers that wanted this one. But this one comes from the commission, the Organización de la Letra de Año of Miguel Febre Patron for 2024 in Cuba. But with that said, as always, it's my pleasure. Iburu, Iboya, Bucheche. And stand by for some patakis.